In this short video we are going to explore and demonstrate the sacred geometry behind the Lone Head of Daviot recumbent stone circle. Situated in the Aberdeenshire landscape of North East Scotland is the Lone Head of Daviot recumbent stone circle. It is located approximately 3.8 kilometres north of the River Newry, about 8 kilometres east of the town of Inverurie. This is a restored circle and it retains its full complement of two flankers, recumbent and eight circle stones. Like all other recumbent stone circles, this circle dates to around 2500 BC. Before we start our rope experiments here, I would strongly recommend that you view our previous video taken at the Easter of Courtes recumbent stone circle. More so because I strongly believe that the specialist builder who designed Easter Accortes also designed Lone Head of Daviot Recumbent Stone Circle. Let us look at some of the facts. Here are some interesting facts comparing the dimensions between the Easter Accortes Stone Circle and the Lone Head of Daviot Stone Circle. The diameter of Lone Head of Daviot is 67 0.5 feet. The diameter of the Easter Aquathis circle is 65.625 feet. The difference between the two is 22.5 inches. The length of Easter Aquathis recumbent stone is 13.125 feet. The length of Lone Head of Davids recumbent stone is 11.25 feet. The difference between the two is 22.5 inches. And here we can see an example of that 22.5 inch unit of measurement at stone number 8. Of course the people in the Neolithic did not use imperial measurements nor metric measurements. They were probably more familiar with using body parts, for instance the width of this stone is the length of my arm, otherwise known as an L. Dr Hill has surveyed all of the Aberdeenshire's 71 recumbent stone circles and he has discovered one of the sacred secrets used by the original builders. There is a mathematical relationship between the diameter of a circle and the length of its corresponding recumbent stone. The length of Lone Head of Davit recumbent stone is one sixth of the length of the circle's diameter. Our next rope experiment is to demonstrate the re mathematical relationship between the diameter of the circle and the length of the recumbent st stone. We're going to lay out the length of rope across the diameter of the circle, then we're going to fold that rope six times in order to show the length of the recumbent stone. So what we're going to do now is take the length of rope for the diameter of the circle and fold it six times in order to show the proportional relationship with the length of the recumbent stone. So that's three, four, five, six.
There is a mathematical ratio between the diameter of the circle and the average spacing between the circle stones. The ratio at lone head is a 3 and 1 quarter, which gives an average length of 20.76 feet. And here we can see Dr. Hill demonstrating that measurement at the stone circle. The circle stones at lone head of Davit recumbent stone circle have all been specifically positioned to capture astronomical alignments associated with the movements of the sun and moon. In this image we can see four of the most important stones at Lone Head of Davit. Stones number 4, 5, 10 and 9. If these four stones are connected by an imaginary rectangle, then they create what Dr Hill refers to as a station stones rectangle. These rectangles are vital to understanding the astronomy associated with these stone circles. Let us look at some of the astronomy connected with just these four stones at Lone Head of Davit. I'm now standing at one of the most important astronomical stones at Lone Head of Davit. It is in fact stone number four. And if I stand at stone number four and look towards the direction of stone number five, I am looking at an azimuth of 40 to 41 degrees azimuth, which matches the position of summer solstice sunrise. Now, if I look in the direction from stone number five to stone number four, I'm looking in an azimuth of 221 to 222 degrees, which matches the position of the winter solstice sunset. As well as these rectangles aligning towards the movement of the sun and moon, they also point towards other recumbent stone circles across the landscape. I'm still standing at stone number four, but this time I'm looking across the recumbent between the two flankers, which matches an azimuth of 270 degrees which represents the position of the sunset at the times of the equinoxes in March and in September. Perhaps also, this alignment here points towards Dunadir Recumbent Stone Circle. So maybe the people at Lone Head of Daviot would travel westwards in spring and in autumn to help the people at Dunadir with the harvesting and sowing of the crops. I'm still standing at stone number four, but this time I'm looking in the direction towards stone number nine, which is at an azimuth of 320 degrees, which matches the position of the setting sun at summer solstice sunset. But it also points in the direction of yonder Bogni recumbent stone circle. Perhaps there was a market day on the day of the summer solstice and the people at Lone Head of Avenue would know what day and what direction to travel towards yonder Bogni in order to trade and exchange their goods. Far from being randomly selected, the orthostats that make up an recumbent stone circle were also specifically chosen for their shapes. And these specific shapes were meant to stand in certain positions in their respective circles. No doubt certain shapes must have held symbolic meaning to the eyes of the beholder. Here is an example at Lone Head of Davit. I now want to move on to talk about the shapes of the stones. I do believe that the shapes of the stones at these recumbent stone circles were specially selected for their symbolic meanings. In our previous video at Easter Recortes, I spoke about the zigzag shaped stones, but today at Lone Head of Daviot I want to talk about squat stones. We can compare this shape with the similar squat stones at Tom Navery and the Nine Stains stone circles. Originally I thought that this stone had been broken sometime in the past. But then I began to discover other squat stones at other recumbent stone circles. Now another important feature about this squat stone is that it is aligned on the cardinal points. 
and if I place this stone it points in the direction of true north. Possibly this stone was used as a kind of marking or sighting stone involved with setting out the geometry of the circle. But also it may have held ritual symbolism for which I shall now talk about. Of course we can't expect the people of the Neolithic to be astronomers or mathematicians. So in this next unusual archaeological experiment I'm going to try and explain the symbolism behind the orientations of the stones and I shall use stone number nine for my experiment. I'm going to start with the direction of north which represents the elements of earth and to help me I'm going to place a carved stone ball which originates from Orkney Isles into the north and symbols of the home stone axe cattle ankle bone and sheep bone so north and the elements of earth represents the home the domestic use of the landscape Our next direction is east, which is represented by the element of air. And to help me explain the element of air, I will use flint arrowheads to represent flight and direction. But also, very interestingly, I shall place my flint tools in the direction of east, which represents the east coast of Aberdeenshire the source of flint for all of Aberdeen. Our next direction is south, which is represented by the element of fire, which is signified by flint and iron, the source of combustion during the Neolithic. Our final direction is the direction of west which is representative of the element of water and to signify the symbolism of the west I've chosen a Neolithic flint knife and a Stone Age battle axe to represent the spirit of the warrior. So the purpose of this experiment was to try to explain the symbolism attached with time and direction across the landscape using objects that would be most familiar to the Neolithic people at that time. We hope that you have enjoyed this video as well as our previous film at Easter Aquathy's Stone Circle. Definitely we plan to produce in the future more films showing the sacred geometry at the Aberdeenshire Recumbent Stone Circles.